Hello everyone and welcome to video number three of our PHP web developing tutorials. In this video we're going to talk about variables and to start off with let's look at our uh, project we already got started in NetBeans and let's take out the echo statements that we had in there before in our PHP actually. Let's just go down here and we're going to tab over and put our code inside of a tab. I'll just tab over uh, and put all of our code in a line underneath that PHP tag. So we're going to create what's called a variable in PHP and a variables are just used to hold data, hold information so that you can work with it. And a variables in PHP start out with a dollar sign. And we can name these variables anything we want, but we have to start them with a letter or an underscore. And they can be only alphanumeric characters and underscores, which means they could be A through Z, one, two, one through nine or zero through nine, and they can have underscores. They can't have spaces. If you're going to have a space or if you need to name your variables on multiple words, then you need to use either underscore or, or camel case to designate your words. So for instance, if we wanted a variable called first name, now you could call it just first name like this. You can't call it this. That's illegal. The space breaks the variable. You could also say this. That's called camel casing. Now, the first letter of the variable in a camel case is usually lowercase in this type of camel casing. Anyway, and then the, the, the first letter of all other words is capital. That makes it easy to read. And you can also use an underscore and call it first name like that. So we can use either one. I'm going to use the camel casing. So first name equals, and for variables in PHP, you could assign any value to this that you wanted or an expression to it that you want. We're going to assign it a string of Randy. That's my first name. So a variable starts with a dollar sign. It can't have spaces. It has to be letters or numbers. It can't start with a number. It has to start with a letter or an underscore. And to assign, we use the assignment operator, which is the equal sign. And we're assigning this one a string, which is enclosed with quotes. We could also enclose it with single quotes like this. There are caveats you have to look for whenever you're using single and double quotes. And I'll go into that maybe in a little bit. But uh, one, one of the things is if you're escaping characters, like escaping a new line character like that, you have to enclose the string in double quotes. So single quote will interpret that as a literal, a literal backslash n. So that string would actually be Randy backslash n. But in double quotes, this looks like Randy in a new line, just to confuse you a little bit more. All of our statements in PHP end with a semicolon. So that's the end of the statement. We're assigning the name Randy to the variable first name. And we could create another, another variable called last name. And for that, we'll just use underscore. Normally, if you're going to be writing a web page or a website, you'll want to have a convention that you use. And for that convention, you need to either stick with camel casing or the use of underscores throughout your code. So just for convention's sake, we'll, we'll go ahead and use camel casing on this. And actually, I was going to get my last name. It's Randy Yates. And when you're assigning variables like this, there's a common practice to tab over and align your equal signs or your assignment characters here up so that your code looks a little bit neater. That's something I do a lot. This white space in the middle here doesn't matter. It can be any number of spaces. But to keep everything lined up a little bit better in the code, I usually add tabs to line those assignment characters up. So if you've used other languages, you'll notice that we don't have to declare the variable. Like if you're using C or another language, you might have to declare this as an int. Uh, variable or something like that. You don't have to do that in PHP. It's a, it's a loosely typed language, so this variable can be created and initialized on one statement pretty easily. When you get into classes and the object-oriented side of PHP, then you might run into some scope issues, and we'll, we'll get into that later, but know that you don't have to declare your variables in this context. You can simply just assign something to a variable name, and you've got that variable for the rest of the duration. So we could actually echo, we could echo that variable now, first name. So we've echoed the variable first name. And then we could echo a space, we could echo the last name. Like so, and we save that. We come over here and refresh. Let's go into actual HTML. So now we have my name echoed out there. And we'll go into con concatenation later, show you how to do that, but this is just showing how you can echo those variables. When you when you echo that variable name, it actually give it, it returns the string that's in that variable. One thing to, to note about PHP is since that's loosely typed, 
you can assign anything to that variable later on and it can break your code in a way that you're not you don't foresee so if for instance I, down here I set name equal to one then you you should note that the first name is now the number one it's now an integer variable which can throw a wrench into your your engine if you're not careful because that variable doesn't necessarily have to be a string it's not going to throw it give you an error it'll, it'll allow it to be used as an integer later on and you can you can reassign anything to that variable so that's something to look out for later on in a less loosely typed programming language you wouldn't see this type of problem and it doesn't appear to be a problem now maybe but later on it will definitely show up as a problem you, if you're not careful you have to be careful with your variables and make sure that you're assigning what needs to be assigned to them because you could inadvertently assign a, an array to a variable that you're expecting to be a string and then when you try to echo that it's not going to come out correct so that's all for this video in the next video we're going to look at how to manipulate string variables a little bit more or strings in general and then we'll be going into numbers and things like that with it i hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe